Hey, what's happening, everybody? My name is Peter Olinto, and I am one of the lead instructors for the Wiley Review for the CFA. And we are looking to earn your business today. So how do we go about earning your business? So we've picked a heavily tested topic in level one to kind of illustrate our methodology and walking you through not only the content, but how we would apply that to questions. So a uh, statement of cash flow, if you've started studying yet, or even if you have not, um, very important, both in terms of how uh, you prepare the statement under US GAAP, IFRS, making sure you could put things in quote unquote, the right bucket, operating, investing, and financing. And then operating cash flow could be calculated directly, indirectly, and then cash flow from operations becomes your starting point for calculating something called free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity. So I hope you're excited. We are as well. So let's jump in and let's do it. All right. What's happening, my friends? Are we ready? Statement of cash flow. Let's do it. You know, there's a direct and an indirect method. Well, this question is going to primarily, this set of questions will primarily review the indirect method. But before we do a statement of cash flow, let's review some of the basics. So before we dig into those details, okay, we know that cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing are the three primary buckets we're going to have to put all of our transactions. Now, cash flow from operating focuses in on the change in operating assets and the change in operating liabilities. The question I get is, what's the difference between an operating asset and a current asset? Well, your operating assets are all current assets except cash and cash equivalents. Okay, so there's a lot in common between operating assets and current assets, but they're not exactly the same. So operating assets or all your current assets, things like receivables, inventory, prepaids, as well as trading securities. Okay, those are all your operating assets. What's an operating liability? All your non-interest bearing debt. All non-interest bearing debt. Okay, those are primarily your current liabilities, but deferred tax liabilities may not be current, but they're nonetheless an operating liability. So operating liabilities, all non-interest bearing. Okay, what's cash flow from investing focus in on? That focuses in on the change in your non-current assets. Okay, your non-current assets, generally one of three types, your property, plant, and equipment, your long-term investments, buying stocks and bonds of other companies, as well as anything we classify as available for sale or held to maturity. The only time something is going to be classified as an operating asset is when it's a trading security. Okay, but when you buy stocks and bonds of other companies, available for sale, held to maturity, you call it an equity investment, whatever it is, those are long-term investments. Okay, those are all going to be cash flow investing. And then buying or selling intangibles. Okay, your intangibles, your patents, your copyright, your trademark, your franchise, your license, that's all cash flow from investing. Okay, what's cash flow from financing? Change in your own debt. Okay, with the magic word being debt, it's got to be interest bearing. It's got to be interest bearing debt. Sometimes they use the word negotiated. Okay, negotiated debt. So all synonymous, debt, interest-bearing, negotiated. The buzzwords that you know it's uh, interest-bearing, a financing liability, things like a note, if you see bond, debenture, a mortgage, okay, a line of credit, things of that nature, all of those items are interest-bearing, okay? So cash flow from financing, primarily changing your own tone, uh, your own debt. Now, notice debt could be short-term or long-term. Okay, notes could be short-term or long-term. So I didn't say that cash flow from financing was exclusively long-term. It's mostly long-term, but it could be short-term or long-term. The question is, is it interest-bearing? Is it negotiated? Do they use the word debt? Cash flow from financing also focuses in on the change in your own equity. Okay, not somebody else's debt or equity. That would be investing. Okay, change in your own equity, all righty? So you could issue equity, you could repurchase equity, okay? Also, not only is it issuing or repurchasing your own equity, 
but paying, not just declaring. You got to be paying and it's got to be a cash dividend. Okay, paying a cash dividend. All righty. Now, I'm primarily focusing in this sample lecture on U.S. GAAP. Okay, but there are some very important differences between U.S. GAAP and IFRS. But for right now, okay, and by the way, U.S. GAAP and IFRS could be exactly the same. IFRS just gives you options and how to account for different transactions. It could be the same as U.S. GAAP, okay, but beyond the scope of what we're doing in this sample lecture. For right now, three major buckets, cash flow from operating, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing. Now, whenever an asset goes up, current or non-current, whenever the change in the asset, if the asset goes up, I want you to think you're on the buy side of that equation. Therefore, cash is going down. Anytime we have a change in an asset and the asset's going down, well, I want you to think we're on the sell side. Therefore, cash is going up. So the relationship between change in cash and change in asset inversely related. And that's true whether it's current or non-current. When you look at the change in your own debt or equity, when your own debt or equity goes up, you're issuing the debt, you're issuing the stock, you're raising capital. Therefore, cash goes up. Change in your own debt or equity, anytime your own debt or equity goes down, you're repaying the principal on that debt. Or maybe you're repurchasing your own stock or maybe you're paying a cash dividend. Okay, it's got to be a dividend. It's got to be paid. Then cash goes down. So the relationship between your change in your own debt and equity and the change in cash, they are directly related. So change in asset, change in cash, inverse relationship. So we subtract that change Whereas debt or equity, the relationship is direct, so we add the change, okay? The change could be plus or minus, watch your signs, okay? That change could be plus or minus, watch your signs. You do the opposite with change in assets, keep the sign with change in your own debt or equity, all righty? So that's a brief background on some of the general issues with respect to the statement of cash flow. Before we answer this particular set of questions, I want to review with you cash flow from operations can be done one of two ways directly which I'm not going to do right now or indirectly okay how do you know on the exam what way to prepare a statement of cash flow obviously it's only multiple choice but just keep in mind sometimes they'll just tell you we want cash flow from operating well the first thing you got to remember is you're going to get the same result albeit a different format But to do the direct method, you need to have information about cash in and cash out, okay? So if you're going to do the direct method, you've got to be able to calculate cash in and cash out. If you're going to do the indirect method, you're going to ignore, ironically, any cash in or cash out. That's going to be distractor information. If you're doing the indirect method, you need to look for things like net income, depreciation, gains, losses, change in your operating assets, change in your operating liabilities, okay? So you know you're going to do the indirect method when you get this kind of information. Now, mind you, if you were going to do the direct method, then net income, depreciation, gains and losses would all be distractor information, okay? So many times they give you information about both direct and indirect, But to choose one method, you've got to have the complete set of information or you can't do that method. Okay, so many times they give you surplus distractor information that has no bearing on the solution. Alrighty, so direct and indirect method, same result, different format. We're going to focus primarily in this sample question on the math intensive items, not so much the theory. Alright, so now let's see if we can apply that. First of all, technique. If you take a look at this question with me, understanding the cash flow statement, Please don't start reading the facts first. Why? You read this mountain of information and you have no idea what in the hell to do with it. Then by the time you get to the question, then you're going to have to go back and reread the facts in context now that you've seen what they want you to do with the information. Okay? So much better if you simply start with the question stem first. Okay? So our first question here wants us to calculate cash flow from operations. So I'm thinking on the exam, as soon as I see that, well, hey, am I going to do the direct or the indirect method? As soon as I see net income, depreciation, things of that nature, I'm immediately thinking, hey, 
That, that's the information I need to do the indirect method. Okay, so now that I know I'm going to do the indirect method, I call it legalized cheating. Before you read that mountain of information again, set up your formula, your generic formula, and then you'll plug in. So how do you do the indirect method? And guys, you need to know this cold because not only can they ask you to calculate cash flow from operations, but this is generally the starting point in calculating free cash flow to the firm or free cash flow to equity, as you know. So my formula, I start with net income. Per the income statement, that's a cruel basis and that includes non-operating items. So I want to go from net income, a cruel basis, per the income statement, which is your bottom line, which includes non-operating items. And I want to go to that, from that, to cash flow from the operating activities. So the first thing I'll do is add back depreciation and most amortization. Why? That made net income go down, but no cash went out the door. So I add that back. I'm going to add back losses and I'm going to subtract out gains. Why? Because on the income statement, these items are specifically non-operating, not part of our core business. So I want to back those items out. Okay. Now, next thing I want to do is look at my balance sheet items. I want to subtract my change in operating assets. I want to add my change in operating liabilities, inverse relationship. This we get from balance sheet information. Remember, your operating assets are all current assets except cash and cash equivalents. And your operating liabilities are anything that's non-interest bearing. Okay, so let's now that we have our formula, see if we can't just plug and go. Alrighty, so you get that formula in front of you. Now you plug in. Did they give us net income? They sure did. My opinion, drop the zeros. Just to keep it neat, okay, just to keep it neat, my suggestion would be let's drop those zeros. So a million one twenty. That's our starting point. Depreciation expense, add back that 27. Now I'm looking for losses. Do I see losses? Don't apply. NA. Do I see gains? No, I don't. NA does not apply. Now, why do I write that in my generic formula? Look, when you review a question, guys, when you practice for the exam, your goal is to review the formula in its entirety. If a particular question does not have that particular concept, that's okay. But you got to make sure you're reviewing the formula in its entirety. Okay, now increase in inventory. That's an operating asset. Increase in taxes payable, that's an operating liability. Issuance of common stock, that's a financing inflow. So I'm going to ignore that for right now. Dividends paid, U.S. GAAP, financing outflow. And by the way, no confusion, we are in fact applying U.S. GAAP. Buying land, investing outflow. Why is that investing? Because land is a non-current asset. Investment in an associate investing outflow okay investments in associates you're buying stock of another company so long as it's not a trading security it's investing okay purchase of held for trading alrighty now that's an operating asset okay so whenever they call it a trading security okay think of a day trader all right you buy securities you sell them the same day you're looking to flip it right away Oh, normally when you're buying and selling right away, that's part of your core business. Available for sale securities, that's not trading. So that's investing inflow. Okay, that's investing inflow. So I have three numbers here that are part of my operating. Alrighty, so I've got a decrease in inventory. What's the relationship? Inverse. So I subtract that decrease, thus I'm adding 13.8. Okay, I have another operating asset, a purchase of trading securities. So we do the opposite. If you're buying, right, cash is going down. So I'm going to subtract that 7.2. And then operating liabilities, direct relationship, keep the sign. So if I've got an increase in taxes payable, I'm adding that positive 1.5. I'd add the 1.5 and there we go. Cash flow from operations, work your numbers down and we get... 1155.1. Now, if you're religious, you'd say a prayer, and I hope that's an answer choice. And as my friend the Fonz would say back in the happy days era, wow, hey, there it is, choice A.
Happy days. I'm dating myself. The Fonz. Two thumbs up. All righty. One question down. Let's do a couple of more in this set. Okay. The next question asks us to do cash flow from investing. So again, if this were the exam, you're thinking, hey, that's the change in my non-current assets. Okay. If you're on the buy side, if the non-current asset goes up, cash is going down, it's an outflow. If you're on the sell side, the asset goes down, cash is going up, that's an inflow. So the relationship with any type of asset and change in cash is inverse. So now we already have this labeled. So let's find anything that was a change in a non-current asset. And just remember, that could be PP&E, long-term investments in other companies, and intangibles, okay? Patents, copyrights, trademarks, license, franchise, things of that nature. Okay, remember, investments, so long as it's not a trading security, that's considered investing. Okay, so now I take a look. I have my setup. All right, we have an investing outflow, a purchase of land. All righty, so now that we've got our purchase in land, we've got one of those numbers. Okay, so cash flow from investing, Let's see, we bought that land. So let's book that in. All righty. So let's see, purchase of land, 28.3. So we buy land, we buy, we're on the buy side of P, P, and E. That's 28.3. That's an outflow. Okay, we bought that land. Let's see what else we got. Another investing activity. Investment in associate. Well, we have that investment in associate. So that means we're buying stock of another company. And as a general rule, when we call it an associate, okay, an equity investment, that gives us an indication of maybe how many, uh, what percentage of the shares we bought, which is another story. But nonetheless, we're not calling it trading. So an investment in associate, so we're on the buy side. We're on the buy side. We bought somebody we're going to call an associate. So that's an outflow of 58000 Then let's see what else we have. A sale of available for sale securities. So whenever you have a sale of available for sale securities. Now remember, if it's available for sale or they call it held to maturity. Okay, that's an investing activity. So available for sale or held to maturity, that's an investing activity. So I can't stress enough, guys, whenever we talk about trading securities, that's operating. Okay, if it's available for sale or held to maturity, then that's considered investing. So obviously applies right here. So what side of the transaction were we on there? We have a sale. So we're on the sell side. So this is going to be an inflow. So we sold some available for sale securities. That's going to be an inflow of 84.7. So we have two outflows. We have one inflow. All righty. So take a second, net your numbers out. All righty, if you net those numbers out, you got the negative 28 outflow, the negative 58 an outflow, followed by the 84.7 inflow. Our answer here is choice C, a negative 1600. All righty, so it's a net outflow of 1.6. Okay, so a net outflow of 1.6. So correct answer, letter C. Now be mindful, guys. Is that a bad thing when cash flow from investing is negative? No. When cash flow from operations is negative, that's a red flag. If you can't generate cash from your core business, I'd be very nervous. So when you're a mature business, you better be able to generate positive cash from that core business. Negative operating cash flow. Now look, it could be a cyclical business. Maybe um, in certain quarters throughout the year, it might you know be normal in that industry to have a negative operating cash flow. But if period after period, your cash flow from operations is negative, we got a big problem. Cash flow from investing though, when that's negative, exact opposite analysis. That means we're on the buy side primarily of non-current assets. That means we're growing. 
or we have the potential for growth, greater capacity. Now think about it. When cash flow from investing is positive, that would be a red flag because if period after period your cash flow from investing is positive, the red flag is, well, look, you're closing your stores. You're selling off all your PP&E. Maybe you're selling off your investments because, I don't know, you can't generate cash from your core business. All righty, so you want to be able to interpret that change in cash as well. All righty, now we got cash flow from financing activities. Cash flow from financing. All righty, so that's the change in our own debt and equity. Change in our own debt and equity. The debt could be short term or long term. The key is, is that debt is what? Interest bearing. And then the change in our own equity. If we issue, cash goes up. If we repurchase our own stock, cash goes down or we pay, not just declare, but we got to pay. And it's got to be a cash dividend, guys, not a stock dividend or a property dividend. For it to be on the statement of cash flow, you actually have to pay that cash dividend. All righty, so now we've already isolated. Where's our cash flow from financing? Well, we see that we have an issuance of common stock. When you sell your own stock, we know that that's a financing inflow. Okay, cash flow from financing. So that's a financing inflow. All righty, so cash flow from financing. So far we have financing inflow. So we issued stock. So that would be a financing inflow. And how much did we issue that stock for? Let's see. The issuance of stock, 60. So that's a $60,000 inflow. Now just scan your information again. Let's see what else we have. All righty, so now dividends paid. Oh yeah, whenever you pay a dividend, not just declare it, and unless they tell you otherwise, that's a cash dividend, not a stock or a property dividend. So paying cash dividends, hey, that's a financing outflow. So financing outflow, we paid that cash dividend. So we paid, not just declared, a cash dividend. So we paid that cash dividend, so that was 32.3. So we've got an inflow, an outflow. We have a net inflow as the inflow is bigger than the outflow, confidence building. So the 60 minus the 32.3, 27.7 cash flow from financing, 27.7 choice C. Now, I want to remind you, there's only one way to do cash flow from operating and cash flow from investing, and that's directly. You got to look for the cash in, and the cash out, okay? When we talk about direct and indirect method, that's an option that's only available to cash flow from operating. That could be direct or indirect. And whether we did the direct or indirect method, assuming you have enough information, you'd get the same result, albeit a different format, okay? But only one way to do cash flow from investing and financing, you gotta look for the cash in and the cash out. Alrighty, so that wraps up a little review, just the math intensive items, but cash flow, Okay, basic fundamentals, primarily focusing in on the indirect method. If you're interested, we have another lecture that'll do the direct method. All righty, hopefully you're interested. I'll see you there. Woo, baby. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope it was good for you as it was for me. I really enjoyed walking you through that statement of cash flow. I sincerely hope we earned your business. And again, look online. We have lots of free samples, uh, various topics, not only at level one, but levels two and three as well. But on behalf of everyone at Wiley, I want to say thank you for joining us. And uh, hopefully we, in fact, earned your business. We'll see you in class.